Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. In a recent episode of Red Giant TV, Michael Park showed us how to create the Harry Potter Death Eater effect. Now, in this episode, Michael returns to us with some more magic, but this time, it's holiday magic. Using Trapcode Particular and Star Glow, we'll be building a 3D Christmas tree complete with lights and star at the top. So, with no further ado, and mostly because I want to start my holiday break as fast as I can, I give you Michael Park. Hey everyone, Michael Park here, and in this special holiday tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to create a realistic 3D Christmas tree using Trapcode Particular 2.0. So let's get started. Let's start by creating a new composition by choosing Composition, New Composition, and let's call this Final Comp. We're going to use the HDV 720p 25 frames per second preset, and we're going to change the duration to 9 seconds and 15 frames. Now the first thing I want to do is add in a background. So from the menu, choose Layer, New, Solid. Let's call this BG for background. Make sure it's comp size and click OK. The color doesn't matter because we're going to add a ramp. So from the menu, choose Effect, Generate, Ramp. Let's change the ramp shape from a linear ramp to a radial ramp. Let's change the start of the ramp from the top here to just below the bottom, somewhere around there, and let's change the end of the ramp here from the bottom up here to this corner. Let's change the start color from this black to a mid-red with an RGB value of around 120.00, and let's change the end color to black. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see better what we're doing. Now we're going to be using some of the new 3D shading capabilities of Particular 2.0, so in order to take advantage of that, we need a new light. So from the menu, choose Layer, New, Light. Let's change the color to something a little bit yellow with an RGB value somewhere in the neighborhood of 240, 255, 200. Accept those settings, and let's hit P to reveal its position. And let's change the position to 485, 308, negative 444. This will basically offset the light just to the left-hand side here, so we'll be shading one part of the tree. This will give us a good three-dimensional look to the tree. Next, let's start building our tree, but really, what is a Christmas tree without a tree skirt? Let's go ahead and make one of those first. Let's create a new composition by choosing Composition, New Composition, and let's name this Tree Skirt. Next, let's change the width to 1000 pixels and the height to 300 pixels. Let's click OK, and to this let's add layer, new, solid, and let's make the color kind of a mid-red, which will be an RGB value of about 120.00. Click OK, and let's rename this skirt. Let's choose OK. Next to this, let's add effect, generate, grid. Now we're going to be using the grid effect to make vertical stripes on our tree skirt. So let's change the blending mode from none to multiply. Let's change the color from white to that dark red of 120.00. And let's play around with the settings a little bit. We want to make these lines wider so that they'll create our stripes. So let's increase the border from 5 up to something in around 72. Now we need to offset these corners a little bit, so we need to stretch this out until we get the look that we want. We can do that by adjusting these corner point positions. Now what we're going to be doing is actually wrapping this skirt around into a circle. So we want this last edge on this side and on this side to be exactly half the width of our stripe so that it matches up nicely. So let's go ahead and make our stripes as even as possible. Try a corner of 643 and 332. And let's change the anchor point to 498, negative 33. Now we've got nice even stripes with just a hint of a border at the top and the bottom. Let's jump back into our final composition and let's take our tree skirt pre-composition and drop it in above the background. Next to this, let's add effect, distort, polar coordinates. Let's change the type of conversion from rectangular to polar and increase the interpolation from 0 to 100. Now what that has done is basically remapped our rectangle into a circle and given us the look of a round tree skirt. Now before we go any further, let's add a camera to our scene. 
From the menu, choose Layer, New Camera. Let's make it a 35mm preset and click OK. Select our tree skirt precomp again and let's make it a 3D layer by clicking the 3D switch. Select your rotate tool and let's rotate this 90 degrees by rotating on the X axis, hitting shift and rotating it till it snaps to 90 degrees. Now let's drag this down in space until it comes here to the bottom. Hit P to reveal its position and let's drag it up maybe just a hair to about 654 in the Y axis. Now it looks a little dark because we made it a 3D layer and it's interacting with this light. I don't want it to interact with the light so let's select the layer and bring up the material options and let's change the accept lights from on to off. Now the tree skirt is looking a little too flat in color so let's go ahead and take care of that. If the skirt's going to be under a tree the center is going to be a little darker than the outside edge so let's mimic that. With the layer selected choose layer, layer styles, inner glow. Let's twirl down the inner glow properties and let's change the color from this yellow value to a dark red with an RGB value of 8000. And let's also change the blend mode from screen to multiply and change the source from edge to center. This will make the glow come from the center instead of the edge. Let's increase the size from 5 to 40. Now adding that layer style really helped the look of the tree skirt. However, it's still looking a little flat. No problem. Let's create a new adjustment layer by choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And let's rename this Mesh Warp. Let's drag it just above the tree skirt. And with that layer selected, choose Effect, Distort, Mesh Warp. Now let's increase the rows from 7 to 20. And increase the columns from 7 to 10. As you can see, we have a point lined up here right in the middle of our tree skirt. Let's take that point and drag it up in Y space. And we can adjust these handles just a little bit on either side. And if we hop off there, you can see that adding that mesh warp really gave us the illusion of a round tree skirt, which is exactly what we want. All right, this is looking better, but it still looks like it's floating around here in space and there's no floor. Let's take care of that next. From the menu, choose Layer, New, Solid. Let's rename this Solid Floor. Let's make the width 1500 pixels and the height 1500 pixels. And let's make the color an RGB value of 8000. Let's choose OK. And let's turn this into a 3D layer. I want to cut this out into a circle. So with the layer selected, double click on the Ellipse tool to create a circular mask. Next, let's rotate this 90 degrees by choosing the Rotation tool and rotating on the X axis, holding down shift so it snaps to 90 degrees, and then select the move tool and let's drop this down below our tree skirt layer. Now you'll notice that no matter how far down we drop this layer, it's not going to go below the tree skirt. And that's because our floor layer is 3D and our tree skirt layer is 3D, but we have a 2D adjustment layer separating the two. What we need to do is drop the floor layer below the tree skirt and position it so that's right about in the center of the skirt. Now let's hit S to reveal its scale and I want to scale this up pretty big. I really want this to go into the distance. So let's increase the scale value from 100 to 1000. And I think I want to push it down just a little bit. Next let's hit F to reveal the mask feather properties and let's feather this out 300 pixels. Let's drop down the rest of the mask properties and let's bring back the expansion negative 450 pixels. Now we've got a nice horizon line here out in the distance. I still want to see a little more definition under the tree skirt. So let's select the tree skirt and choose layer, layer styles, drop shadow. All right, enough with the preliminaries. Let's get started on the tree. From the menu, choose layer, new, solid, and make sure it's comp size. Let's rename this particular tree. And just for fun, let's make this a green color. To this layer, let's add effect, trap code, particular. The first thing I want to do is twirl down the emitter dialog box and change the direction from uniform to disk. If we scrub through the timeline you can see that the particles emit from the center position in a circle. However if we rotate this on the x-axis you can see that it actually casts the particles out on a flat horizontal plane not in a spherical pattern like the default uniform direction would. Let's decrease the directional spread from 20 to 0. 
This way all the particles are on the same plane. Let's make the rotation 90 degrees. The next thing we want to do is animate the position of the emitter over time to start here at the base and go up in the y-axis. This way the particles at the bottom will have more time to spread out than the particles at the top which will naturally give us our conical Christmas tree shape. So let's animate our emitter position. Make sure you're on frame zero in the timeline and let's change the y position of the emitter from 360 to 640. Next let's left click the stopwatch to set a keyframe and scrub down in the timeline to four seconds. Let's change the Y position from 640 to 150. As you can see, we're getting this conical shape, but it's still not quite right. Plus, the particles at the bottom are gone. In order to make sure we see what we're doing properly, let's go ahead and change the particle life from three seconds all the way up to 10 seconds, so they stay on the entire length of the composition. Now we can see the particles have spread out way too far. The first thing we can do to fix that is change the velocity. So let's go back to frame zero and change the velocity from 100 down to 65. If we scrub through the timeline to four seconds, you can see that the particles don't get quite as far out as they did. However, instead of a straight line here on the side, I kind of like my tree with a little bit of a curve. So in order to do that, let's keyframe the velocity over time. So making sure you're on frame zero, let's set a keyframe for the velocity by left clicking the velocity parameter, and then let's scrub down to four seconds again and decrease the velocity from 65 to zero. Now as you can see we get a nice curve. However we've got too much of a concentration of particles here at the top. So once again let's go back to frame zero and let's keyframe the particles per second by left clicking the particles per second stopwatch. Let's increase the particles per second to 175 and then let's scrub down here to four seconds and change the particles per second to zero. Now we have a much more even distribution of particles around our tree. I think our curve here, while nice, is a little too harsh. So let's take care of that in the graph editor. Let's hit U to reveal all of our keyframes and then switch over to the graph editor. Let's select the velocity channel and as you can see we have a linear line here. Let's select the first keyframe and hit convert selected keyframe to auto bezier. We can adjust the curve so we round it off at the top and then let's go to this keyframe and once again convert it to an auto bezier and let's ease this in. There we go, we got a little slight curve here. I like it but I think the particles are getting a little too far out. The best way to handle this in my opinion is to use some physics. So let's get out of the graph editor and scrub down to the physics parameters. Under the air physics you'll see we have a parameter for air resistance. Now if you increase this parameter, it'll basically act like friction on the particles which will slow them down over time. Let's increase the air resistance from zero to 0.1. As you can see this brought in the bottom of our tree a bit and now we have a nice Christmas tree shape. If you scrub in your timeline beyond four seconds, you can see that our tree begins to disintegrate. That's not what we want. We want the tree to grow from zero to four seconds but then stop growing and stay where it is. The best way to handle that is to manipulate the physics time factor. So once again, down in the physics dialog box, let's come down to the physics time factor parameter. Let's scrub in our timeline to three seconds, four frames, and let's set a keyframe for the physics time factor. Now scrub in your timeline to four seconds and decrease the physics time factor down to zero. Now if you scrub in your timeline beyond four seconds, you can see that the tree stays right where it is. Now that we have the basic shape of our tree, let's go ahead and fill it in and make it look a little more realistic. Let's scroll up to the particle parameters and let's decrease the size from five to one. Next, let's change the color. Let's twirl down the set color and change it from at birth to random from gradient. And then let's twirl down the color over life and select the green preset here. This is a little too bright, so let's tone that down by double clicking and changing it to an RGB value of 40, 164, 40. Let's change the darker green color to an RGB value of 10, 110, 10. Next, let's go to the shading and twirl that down and turn the shading on. Let's change the nominal distance, which is the distance from the light that the particles are affected, from 250 to 220. And let's change the diffuse color parameter from 80 to 100. Now we've got a lot of small particles in our scene, but no real tree. Well, the way we're gonna do that is using auxiliary particles. So let's go down to the auxiliary system 
twirl that down and change the emit setting from off to continuously. Now the main particles will continuously emit auxiliary particles as they branch out from the center. Let's go ahead and change some of these parameters. The first thing we want to do is change the particles per second from 10 to 70. This will give us a little more density in our tree. The next thing we want to do is change the life from 0.5 seconds to 6 seconds. This will give us sufficient time so that the particles will stay on for the whole duration of our composition. As you recall, we basically froze the particles in time after 4 seconds, so with a life of 6 seconds, our auxiliary particles will stay on the entire composition. Next, let's increase the velocity from 0 to 5, and this will give us just a little bit of randomness in the auxiliary particle position. Let's twirl down the size over life settings, and let's create a curve by left clicking and dragging kind of an upward arcing shape. This will make the particles at the tips of the Christmas tree a little smaller than the particles at, in the middle, and this will give us a little more realistic look. Next, let's change the color from main from 0 to 100%. Now the auxiliary particles will take on the color of the main particles that emitted them. Now here are a couple optional things that you can do to alter the look of your tree to be a little more to your taste. The first thing you can do is if you don't like the straight linear lines of the tree branches, we can come down here to the physics parameters, twirl down the air physics, and increase the spin amplitude to create a little more of a jagged random look. An amplitude of about 15 looks good to me. Another adjustment you may want to make involves the angle of the tree branches. As you can see, all of our tree branches angle upward about 20 degrees. Now, in most real trees that I've seen, the lower branches are bigger and heavier and kind of droop a little downward or more parallel to the ground, and the upper branches, which are lighter, tend to stick upwards. The way we can affect this tree in the same manner is to change the velocity from motion parameter. Let's set a keyframe for the velocity from motion at 4 seconds by left-clicking the stopwatch, and then let's scrub back into the timeline to 0 seconds and change the velocity from motion from 20 down to negative 5. Now the particles will actually go down at 5 degrees at the beginning, and then as the particle emitter goes up, this parameter will increase to 20 and the branches will start going upwards. Now you can see we have a much different looking tree. In fact, I think we've dipped this down a little too much, so let's go back to frame zero, and I'm going to change mine from negative 5 to 5, so the branches at the bottom are a little upwards. Now this is looking pretty good, but man, there just seems to be something missing. I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, lights! What's a Christmas tree without lights? So let's go up here and keep things straight by renaming this particular layer to tree, and then with the tree particular effect selected, hit Control-D to duplicate it, and rename this to Lights. To make things a little bit faster, let's turn off the tree, and let's solo the particular layer. Now the concept here is, we already have the position of the lights based on the branches we've already created. All we need to do is take out the majority of the particles here, and recolor the lights. So first, let's go ahead and change the particle type from Sphere to Glow Sphere. Let's change the color from random from gradient to at birth. Let's turn the shading off because we don't need it. Let's twirl down the glow settings and change the size from 300 to 500 to make the glow bigger. Let's increase the size of the main particle from 1 to 2. And let's change the transfer mode from normal to add. Next, let's twirl down to the auxiliary system. And here's where we're going to make the majority of our changes. Let's change the emit probability from 100% down to 15%. Now what this will do is decrease the amount of main particles which emit the auxiliary particles. Next, let's change the particles per second from 70 down to 3. Now the main particles only emit these auxiliary particles every so often along the branch. Next, let's change the size from 5 down to 2 to match the main particles, and increase the opacity from 50 to 100. Let's turn back on our initial tree layer, and as you can see, nothing really happened. That's because we need to change the transfer mode and under the rendering dialog box and change it from none to screen. Now you can see we've brought back our tree underneath. Let's unsolo the layer so we can see what it looks like in our scene. Pretty snazzy, huh? But I think it needs a little more pop. To do that, let's add another trap code plugin, Starglow. With the particular layer selected, choose Effect, Trap Code, Starglow. This looks pretty good, but I want to change a few of the settings. Let's change the streak length from 20 down to 5 to tighten it up a bit. What's that you say? You don't like white lights, you want colored lights? 
Man, you guys sound just like my kids. All right, let's add some color. This is actually a fairly simple process. Let's go to our lights particular layer, and let's go down to the auxiliary settings. Let's decrease the color from main from 100 down to zero. If you twirl down the color over life, you can see we've got this kind of a rainbow gradient. If you wanna add in some random color, all you need to do is click the random button here, and it'll automatically cycle through some random colors. So just keep clicking it until you find a combination you like. I'll stick with this one for now. As you can see, we still have a lot of white lights here on the end, and that's because our main particles are set to white as well. So we can do the exact same thing up here in the main particle section. Let's change the set color from at birth to random from gradient. Let's twirl down the color over life, and once again, let's click random. If you want more than just two colors, you can click the first preset here, which will bring up five colors, and then you can click random on that until you find a color combination that works for you. There, I think that looks pretty darn nice. So now we've got our Christmas tree and lights, but the composition still looks kind of empty to me. I mean, every Christmas tree needs a star, right? Right. So let's click here in the bottom so we have no layers selected. Let's go up here to our Shape dialog box and click the Star tool. Now let's drag in the window anywhere, hit Shift to orient it to 90 degrees, and let's drag out a star. It doesn't really matter the size, the color, or the amount of points yet. Just drag out any star shape, but make sure it's aligned to 90 degrees. Next, let's twirl down our poly star parameters here and the poly star path. You can change the amount of points to however many you want, from 10 to 6 to 5, which is what I'm going to use. I'm also going to adjust the inner radius from whatever I dragged it out to be to 8, and also the outer radius to 20. And then I'm going to scroll down here to the stroke and turn the stroke width down to zero and go to the fill and change the color from whatever color it is to kind of a yellow color. That looks good. Next thing I'm going to do is turn this into a 3D layer. Let's twirl down the transform tab and let's change the anchor point so that it is centered on its transform handle here. The next thing we want to do is adjust its position so it's at the very top of our tree. So let's scrub the Y parameter from 360 to 190 to place it atop our tree. Next, let's animate the scale of our star so that it pops on at the end when the tree fully grows to its full height. With the shape layer selected, hit S to reveal its scale, making sure you're at four seconds. Let's set a keyframe for the scale by left-clicking the stopwatch. Let's decrease the scale from 100 down to zero. Then let's scrub in our timeline to 4 seconds, 8 frames, and increase the scale to 130%, and then scrub down another few frames to 4 seconds, 12 frames, and decrease the scale from 130 to 120. Well, it's in the right position, but it's looking a little bland. Let's take care of that. With the layer selected, choose Effect, Stylize, Glow. Let's increase the glow radius from 10 to 30, just to diffuse the glow out a little bit. Looking better, but I still think we need a little more pizzazz. So with the layer selected, choose Effect, Trap Code, Star Glow. This time, let's punch it up a notch by increasing the boost light from 0 to 2. Also, I don't like the default colors of red and green, so let's twirl down the color map A, and instead of the preset, which is this white, green, green, let's change this to Fire. And then the shadows, let's change from this red to kind of an orange color. Next, for color map B, which already has the fire preset selected, let's change the shadows once again to an orange color. Now you can see that looks a whole lot better. If the effect is a little too pronounced for you, you can dial that down by adjusting the streak length down to something around 12. Well, we've got our tree, we've got our lights, we've got our star, but it's still looking a little blank. What we need is a message. Well, let's double click in the project window and let's navigate over to the footage file you downloaded with the project file and let's select the text PNG. Let's drag this into a new composition and as you can see it says Happy Holidays from Red Giant TV. Now the reason why I pre-rendered this out is number one I'm not sure that everyone has this particular font I used and just so that this is consistent across the board everybody's got the same thing. Secondly I've gone ahead and pre-positioned this where it needs to be because we don't need to really spend five minutes figuring out the right position to put our text in to make it line up properly. What I do want to do in this pre-comp though, and the reason why I have pre-composed this is, we're going to use this as a source layer for some particles 
And if you're using text as a source for a particular, you always need to pre-compose it. In addition, what I'm going to do is have this fade on at a particular time. So I'm going to take care of that in the pre-comp. This way we won't have to adjust where the particles come on in the next step. You'll see what I mean. Scrubbing the timeline down to 4 seconds, 14 frames, and hit T to reveal the opacity, and let's set a keyframe. Let's decrease the opacity from 100 to 0. Then let's scrub down in the timeline to 5 seconds and 16 frames, and increase the opacity back up to 100%. Next, let's go back to our final comp, and let's drag our text comp in just below our shape layer. Now, if you scrub in the timeline, past 5 seconds, 16 frames, our text will come on. Let's go ahead and make this a 3D layer, as all particular source layers need to be 3D. And let's choose Layer, New, Solid. Let's call this Particular Text. Make sure it's comp size, and let's change the color to, I don't know, yellow. Click OK. To this layer, let's add effect, trap code, particular. Now basically all we want this layer to do is create little sparkles on our text over time. So let's twirl down the emitter and let's change the particles per second from 100 up to 50,000. I know it sounds like a lot, but we're not going to have them on that long. Next, let's change the emitter type from point to layer. Let's twirl down the layer emitter and change it from none to text, change the layer sampling to particle birth time, and let's change the layer RGB usage to none. Let's decrease the velocity down to zero, and the velocity ran to zero, and the emitter size Z to zero. Now let's twirl down our particle settings, and let's change the life from 3 to 0.3. Like I said, we, won't, we don't want these on too long. Let's also decrease the size from 5 to 2, and let's increase the life random from 0 to 25, just to give us a little variation. Next, in keeping with the look of the rest of our composition, let's add effect, trap code, star glow. Let's decrease the streak length from 20 down to 15, and let's increase the boost light from 0 to 20. As we saw before, the default color maps for A and B are green and kind of red. And since it is Christmas, I kind of like the default, so we'll just leave it. So now we've got our tree, we got our lights, we got our tree skirt, we got our star, we've got our message. I know, let's create some snow. Let's double click in the project window and navigate to the footage file once again and let's grab the snowflakes movie. Let's drop the movie into our composition. We can put it below the background layer and let's turn off its visibility. Next, let's choose layer, new, solid. And let's call this particular snowfall. Make sure it's comp size and let's change this color to white. Next, with the layer selected, choose Effect, Trap Code, Particular. In order to make this go a little faster, let's solo the layer. Let's twirl down the emitter settings and change the particles per second from 100 to 50. This will thin out our snowflakes a bit. The next thing we need to do is change the direction from uniform to directional. We want the particles to all be going down. Let's change the X rotation from 0 to negative 90. This will orient the particles in the right way. Let's change the emitter type from point to box, and let's change some of the emitter settings. Let's increase the emitter size X from 50 to 1500, and also increase the emitter size Y from 50 to 1500. This will give us a box that is very wide and has a lot of depth, but is fairly shallow up and down. Let's move this box up a bit by changing the position Y of the emitter up to negative 100. Now, while we're in the emitter settings, let's change the velocity down from 100 to 60. The next thing we need to do is to increase the particle life as these will cut off at 3 seconds. So let's twirl down the particle settings and increase the life from 3 to 10. Now the particles stay on long enough, but they don't reach the bottom, and that's because there hasn't been enough time for the particles to emit and drop all the way down. Let's go down to the emission extras in the emitter dialog box and change the pre-run from 0 to 100. Now that the particles fall the right distance, let's change them from these spheres, which aren't very realistic, to some actual snowflakes. Let's change the particle type from sphere to textured polygon. And the reason why we're going to use a textured polygon and not a sprite is because the new textured polygon particle in Particular 2.0 actually introduces for the first time true 3D rotation, which really adds to the realism of the effect. Let's twirl down the texture dialog box and change the layer from none to snowflakes.mov. Let's change the time sampling from current time to random still frame. 
As you can see, all the spherical particles have changed to random snowflakes. Let's twirl down the rotation dialog box, which is new to Particular 2.0, and let's adjust some of these settings. Let's increase the random rotation from 0 to 75. This will randomly assign a rotational value to each of the particles as they're born. Next, let's increase the random speed rotation from 0 to 3. This will make all the particles rotate at a slightly different speed as they fall downward. I think the particles are a little too big, so let's adjust that. Back up in the particle settings, let's change the size from 5 down to 3, and change the size random from 0 to 50. Once again, this just gives us a little more of a random look. Speaking of random, we don't want our snowflakes to fall straight down, so let's go down to the physics dialog box and twirl down the air settings. Let's increase the spin amplitude from 0 to 10, and decrease the fade-in spin time from 1 to 0. This way the particles will spin from the moment they're born. Let's also twirl down the turbulence field, and let's increase the effect position parameter from 0 to 20. This will add a little more randomness to the flight of the particles as they drift downwards. Finally, let's scroll down to the rendering dialog box, and let's turn on motion blur by twirling down the motion blur settings and changing motion blur from comp settings to on. Let's unsolo the layer to see how this looks with the rest of our scene. Our scene's looking pretty good here, but I still think we're missing that human element, or shall I say, mythical holiday icon element. That's right, let's add in Santa Claus. Let's navigate back over to the project window and double click. This time, let's grab the triple four zero double zero seven sixty six file, which just so happens to be a Santa Claus movie from the Crowd Control Collection over at AllBetsAreOff.com. Even though I typically rename these files when I download them, I left this one so that you would know exactly what clip it is from Crowd Control should you choose to navigate over there and download it yourself. The one that has been provided for you in the project file is a watermarked version of the file I downloaded. So let's go ahead and drag and drop him into our composition. Let's make Santa a 3D layer by clicking his switch. And let's move him over in the X direction to the side of the tree. And as you can see, he's being recolored because he's a 3D layer and we have a light in our scene. So let's go ahead and twirl down the material options and turn the accept lights to off. That way he doesn't get recolored or affected at all by our light. Next, let's hit S to reveal the scale, and let's scale him up just a bit. 150% looks good. Let's drop him down a little bit so he looks like he's standing on the same level as the Christmas tree. Let's bring him just a little bit closer. And I think we need to do some overall color correction to him because he looks a little too bright and a little too blue for our scene. So with the layer selected, choose Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And in the RGB channel here, let's pull this down a bit. There, now he looks like he fits in the scene much better. Now, if we look at this clip from the start, you can see that Santa starts here with his hand on his hip, and then he kind of extends his hand almost like Vanna White, and looks like he's directing your attention here to his right side, which is where our tree will be growing up. Now you can see that he extends his hand here right around two seconds. So what I want to do is sync up the animation of the tree so that it begins to grow right when he's pulling his hand out so that the scene makes a little more sense. Now we could do this by going in and adjusting all the keyframes on our particular layer and our star layer and everything else, but man, that'd be a royal pain. The easier way to do this is just to grab all of the layers that are affected by the timing, namely the particular tree, the star, and the text elements, and shifting them down the timeline. So let's set our time ruler down here to 1 second 9 frames, which is just before Santa starts extending his hand. Let's unlock our layer emitter and select that. Let's hit Control and select the particular text. Select the shape layer, which is our star. Let's select the text and the particular tree and let's move all these down to 1 second 9 frames by hitting the open bracket key on the keyboard. Now as you can see everything's been shifted over and if we scrub through the timeline the tree starts to emit right when Santa reaches his hand out and it appears that he's using some of his jolly elf magic to make the tree grow before your very eyes. Now on pops the holiday message in all of its sparkling glory along with the star. 
Now the last thing you may wish to do is add a little fader element. So let's choose layer, new, solid. Let's call this fader. Make it comp size, turn the color to black. Click OK, click OK. Let's come down here to the very beginning of our composition at frame zero. Set a keyframe for the opacity. Let's scrub in the timeline to about five frames and turn the opacity down to zero. Then let's come down in the timeline to eight seconds, 15 frames. Set a keyframe for the opacity and then go to the end of your timeline and increase the opacity back to 100%. Now we have an animation that comes and fades in. Our tree grows with Santa right there. We've got a nice snowflake effect and a nice place to put your holiday message. The final thing I want to do just to add a little more visual interest is to create a slight rotation just to show off the 3D aspects of this scene. So let's grab a new null object by choosing layer, new, null object. Let's rename this rotate and let's grab the camera and parent it to the rotation null. Next with the rotation null selected, hit R to reveal the rotation and let's solo this layer so everything renders a little faster. Let's make it a 3D layer. Let's change the Y position from 0 to 20. Let's left click the stopwatch, then slide all the way down to the end of our timeline and change the Y rotation to negative 5. Well, I hope you enjoyed this long, I mean thorough tutorial, and it spurs you on to think of some new and creative ways to use Trap Code Particular 2.0. So until next time, this is Michael Park wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and the very best this holiday season. Thanks, Mike. Outstanding. Lots of great particular information. And if you're looking to stuff your stocking with more particle knowledge, check out Mike's Creative Cow Master Series training DVD, Practical Particles, which focuses on the use of particular in visual effects and motion graphics. You can find that DVD at training.creativecow.net. And you can find our host, the esteemed Mr. Park, over at creativecow.net, moderating the Trap Code Forum. And, well, speaking of particular and the holidays, I thought I'd mention that we just released a new pack of 55 holiday and winter-themed projects designed by Harry Frank for Trapcode Particular, available at Red Giant Software's website. And, of course, if you want to try any of the Red Giant plugins that Michael used in this tutorial, you can download a free trial at redgiantsoftware.com. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for redgianttv.com. Happy holidays, everyone. See you next year.